All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a San Diego, a bit uncharacteristically wet San Diego, but San Diego nonetheless, from the Bay Area, from Mike Gunderson. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good. How are you, John? Good, good. And Mike's the founder and president of Gunderson Direct, the award-winning direct marketing agency. Since 2003, Gunderson Direct has helped businesses drive new leads and close more sales through traditional offline channels, especially direct uh, mail with clients like AAA, Adobe, PayPal, Square, and ZipRecruiter. Uh, Mike is also the founder and CEO of Respond Now LLC, a direct response product incubator that helps small, medium, and enterprise businesses bring their ideas to market through direct marketing. And in addition to this, sound busy enough to me, but uh, in addition to this, Mike has been the president of the Entrepreneurs Organization of Silicon Valley and has served on the EO board for over eight years. You're also a board member of Inclusive Sports. And when you do have free time, you spend it with your wife and three kids. <laughs> That's right. What's going on, John? Yeah, a lot going on. I'm saying I'm a bit exhausted already just reading that. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today, uh, surprisingly enough, is direct mail, given that Mike is a, for, a foremost expert in that area. So, um, Mike, so obviously, like, over the years now, like, everything is, oh, digital, 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 right? And... And I feel like people kind of every so often somebody might bring up, oh, what about direct mail marketing? And people go, oh, well, maybe or whatever. But everybody goes back to digital because it's just easier. I didn't say it was more effective, but it's just easier. So tell me, why, tell me why people are making this, particularly in B two B sales. Why are people making a mistake? Yeah, well, I think um, you know, digital is awesome, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm the first one to uh, to be the cheerleader there. But direct mail just is able to actually target customers on a different level, you know, give them a little bit more uh, time to make a decision, maybe give them a little bit more information to really uh, optimize that conversion. Um, and we've worked with a lot of B2B SaaS companies over the years, really built their direct mail programs from scratch. And uh, often it's referred to as kind of the secret weapon. Mm -hmm. um, and so just based off of the pure targeting capability of direct mail, um, you know, people are able to get a lot more out of it. The CACs are actually lower than digital. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as you start to scale the direct mail um, audience, you actually pay less per impression, unlike digital. As you know, when you start to scale up digital, you're actually bidding those yeah. keywords against more folks and you actually end up increasing the cost per impression. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, digital always seems easier, but it can get out of control expense-wise very, very very quickly. So how has how has the kind of change in people's working uh, arrangements, how has that affected digital marketing? Because it's one of, or direct marketing, because that, mail marketing, because that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about is, I mean, once upon a time, you could get the address at their company and send it to them and, you know, pretty much guaranteed they would get it. Now, you don't know where they are. So how do you overcome that? There's a lot of different ways we can do it. Um, you know, essentially uh, appending those um, business addresses with home addresses, that's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. It's not 100%, but it works really well. Uh, oftentimes that mail is being forwarded um, to folks who are working right. solely from home. So that works well for us. Um, and we're actually targeting more and more uh, business owners and businesses at home, uh, you know, where they work versus where they worked, which was at their uh, corporate headquarters. So that's been working really well, um, especially for small to medium sized companies. It's pretty right. easy to target that way. When you get into enterprise level companies, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, but um, so far, we've been uh, having great success in B2B direct now. Yeah. And and people are uh, people are becoming OK with getting stuff at home because, I mean, they're they're doing their business at home. Right? Yeah, I mean, um, I think there's always going to be people who are annoyed by direct mail, just like with digital. Um, the one thing that we try to do here at Gunderson Direct is really make sure that the mail being delivered is relevant to that right. recipient. So we work hard behind the scenes to make sure that. Um, if we're sending a mailer to try to hire somebody that we're sending it to the HR manager, right? Uh, or we have some indication that that business has some growth potential and they need somebody to fill those spots. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we're trying to uh, sell a loan product, um, you know, like a HELOC or a personal loan, we do a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that that recipient is um, qualified for that loan. So that when they do actually apply for it, 
they're going to get um, they're going to get approved and and they're going to be able to uh, pay off debt or uh, or you know uh, pay for college or even you know uh, remodel their home. And um, I, I was just doing a little research uh, before this uh, interview, and uh, and Mike, it, I came across one of these things where it says that people actually often trust more the tangible thing they get in their hand than the you know the digital that they may get. Yeah, I think there's a couple of different reasons for that. Um, the one main reason I think is that we still get a lot of government documents through the mail. Mm -hmm. The USPS, in fact, is one of the most trusted brands in the United States. So it's being delivered by somebody they trust. And then the mail that's being delivered is stuff that's important to them. So it could be tax documents. It could be medical documents. Uh, oftentimes it's going to be marketing materials. Mm -hmm. But again, because there's less marketing material in the mail these days as, they were, as there were maybe 10 or 15 years years ago, mm -hmm. the few pieces of mail that they receive outside of that official mail is something that they look at. In fact, they have to look at that mail. They have to actually see that mail in order to throw it away. Now, we don't want them to throw it away, but we know that we are going to get that 100% brand impression by them looking at the mail, deciding whether or not that's something that they're interested in. If we do our job right, they will be interested in it. And if not, it goes in the trash can. If, if so, they scan a QR code or they uh, go right online or they pick up the phone and they, you know, hopefully will respond to that direct mail piece. Yeah. And and the other part, as you alluded to earlier, is, is the cost part of this, because I, I think people would be surprised like how cost efficient uh, direct uh, mail marketing can be. Yeah, you know, um, for the companies that we work with, we're doing larger scale direct mail programs. Mm -hmm. So a 50,000, 100,000, 500,000, a million pieces of mail per month is kind of where we want to be. Now, that that's expensive uh, as a pilot to kind of ramp up, right? Because there's investment costs sure. to the manufacturing process. So we have to actually build a direct mail package, send it through the mail, and postage just keeps going up every year. But mm -hmm. um, Although it's expensive, the cost per impression, so if I'm doing 50,000 pieces of mail, uh, that might cost about $38,000. Um, and, and so it's a big upfront investment, but the actual cost per impression is actually not that expensive. And as you start to scale, as I mentioned earlier, you're actually dropping that cost per piece. So if you're doing 50,000 pieces at say, you know, uh, 88 cents per piece on average, and then you scale that up to a million pieces, um, you're going to be looking at somewhere between, you know, 48 and 55 cents per piece. So it's right. a really cool medium in, this, in the sense that it actually re re reduces costs as you scale that platform and gain more customers. And in terms of in terms of response rates compared with uh, other forms of marketing, what are the response rates like, Mike? Well, the response rates that we see for direct mail uh, can really vary. I mean, it can be all the way from a quarter percent all the way up to two, three, four percent uh, um, on on response. Uh, typically, that's due to the type of offer, the type of audience um, that um, that we're sending to. Um, if it's a, a customer mailer, so let's say you're getting a catalog from Banana Republic, for instance, uh, likely you're shopping at Banana Republic, and so when you receive that catalog, you're usually getting it as a customer, which means you have built-in affinity with mm -hmm. that brand. And so when you get that catalog and flip through, there's a li there's a high likelihood you might go to the website and purchase something uh, based off of the sale price of that item or uh, or the new arrivals of those items. So, uh, so where we have customer mail, we can see two, maybe three x a time, uh, th two to three x times response rates. Uh, and then for prospecting, um, uh, for prospecting mail, we're seeing anywhere between a quarter percent to one percent on response rates. Right. So if if someone is uh, if someone's watching this and they're thinking, okay, uh, that sounds interesting. What questions do they need to ask themselves about whether direct mail might be good for them? Well, there's a couple of different things. For the very small businesses, um, a lot of the direct mail efforts you can do, you can do um, really yourself, right? You can simply get a list of, or even create a list of say 50, 60, 100, 150 people around your neighborhood uh, to drive people to your home, uh, um, excuse me, drive people to your um to, to your store. Um, for things like, uh, say, barbershop opening up or a coffee shop opening up, there's very, uh, very good USPS tools like Every Door Direct Mail. It's also known as EDDM, where you can actually kind of uh, send a bunch of mailers uh, into a, a, a very small radius that 
that's very cost effective. So mm-hmm. it won't cost you more than maybe a, a couple hundred dollars to maybe a, maybe a thousand twenty five hundred dollars to do something like that. Um, but when it comes to larger scale direct mail, you really have to look at the the CAG, the cost to acquire the customer, yeah. and see if it can support the cost of that investment. So a good example would be if I'm selling, say, um, a vacuum at thirty nine dollars or forty nine dollars. Um, via the direct mail channel, it's likely not going to pencil out. It's just, you're not going to be able to, the vacuum's a one-time sell. There's Mm -hmm. not a lot of LTV lifetime value to that. And you're likely not going to be able to recoup your marketing costs for that. But Mm -hmm. if you're selling life insurance or if you're selling a credit card or a banking product, or you're trying to sell a home, um, obviously the CAC is much, much higher on that. You can afford to spend 500, a thousand, maybe even $2,000 per customer because you know the LTV of that customer is going to be much, much higher. So at scale, you can invest a lot more money into that channel. And because the uh, because the response rates are high and the conversion rates are even higher than most digital channels, you're actually going to be able to um, to recoup those marketing costs and have a high ROI on that marketing spend. Right. And then just, um, I mean, no, without naming names, can you just give me some examples of kind of creative campaigns that you have run that have had really good results? Sure. I mean, uh, I won't give a, I won't give out too many names, but the one thing I can say is an offer is key, right? Yep. So making sure that we have an, an offer that uh, that entices that recipient to respond. A good example would be maybe a fifty dollar Amazon gift card when you call and learn more about life insurance, for instance, mm-hmm. or maybe it's um, you know maybe it's a fifty dollar off uh, a coupon off of uh, a larger item like maybe furniture uh, mm-hmm. or maybe even. Um, you know, uh, uh, business SaaS products, right? Uh, free is still always working in the mail. And then there's some more unique things that we can do to the mail. There's things like bulky mail, where when we send out a, a piece of mail, it's bulky and it gets your attention and, and you really want to find out what's inside. Um, there's mail that has interesting textures to it. Uh, maybe it has a, a special varnish on it. You know, uh, I was just talking to a colleague uh, recently about uh, scented mail. So you could actually send, um, <laughs> you could send a piece of mail that actually has a, a, a scent. And in fact, we did one for AAA years back where we actually put a new car smell on the on the yeah. inside of the mailer itself. So when you actually pulled out uh, your direct mail letter, you could actually smell leather, uh, a new car leather smell when you opened up the direct mail. So lots of really cool things you can do to really increase response rates. Yeah, I love that. I'm trying to think what 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 would uh, what would a CRM smell like? I don't know. <laughs> and it's one to ponder. And I guess the other part too is Money. obviously, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously, then uh, you know you also want to have this working in conjunction with your other marketing efforts and your digital. So, what from your point of view, what uh, what does a good integrated campaign look like? Sure, that's a really good uh, question. So the first thing is. Uh, we do what's called a digital boost, uh, direct mail boost here at Gunderson Direct. And what that entails is a couple of different components. The first component um, is informed delivery. This is a new service by the USPS. And if you haven't signed up for informed delivery, I highly encourage it. What informed delivery does is essentially give you an email digest of a scanned piece of mail uh, that's coming into your mailbox just hours before that mail arrives to your home. Uh, mm-hmm. This is good for a couple of reasons. One, you get to see and preview what's in your mail. Uh, But two, it allows you to actually respond to some of those marketing offers uh, before the mail even comes. So if you see a marketing offer that's really, really exciting, uh, then you can go ahead and click on that, respond to it uh, in real time once you receive that email and um, and you're off and running. Now, what's great about that service is it's a it's a it's a newer service. It's it's been in market for, I think, two and a half years. Um, And it's a and it's a free service for marketers through the USPS Mm -hmm. where you can actually get that digital touch with that direct mail piece going to the same home. Uh, The second component, of course, is email. A lot lower uh, response rates, but it is always good to have um, an email go out, maybe in the front end or the back end of those campaigns uh, to maybe um, add another impression, uh, add some awareness around that mail and that product. And then the third one uh, that we use is is actually display ad. So we use the actual address of that email piece and we target those homes uh, with uh, with a display ad. So they could be in on their mobile phone. They could be in a couple of their news apps and they'll actually start seeing those ads that will relate to the direct mail coming into their home. Again, building that awareness and excitement about um, and, and basically uh, adding recall to the mailbox when they when they go out to collect their mail. 
Yeah. And then are there any, um, I mean, you mentioned that service from the post office. Are there any other uh, innovations or, or things coming that you uh, that you want to talk about in regard to direct mail? Sure. The, the first one uh, is what I just mentioned, informed delivery. It's really been a game changer. USPS has done a great job integrating that, um, and it's been an awesome tool. Another tool that we just developed, which is Post Reminder, allows marketers to add a enhanced QR code to their direct mail. What that does is when that recipient uh, receives that direct mail piece, say it's for a Black Friday sale, well, that, that direct mail piece comes in home maybe a few days, maybe four or five days, maybe even up to a week before that sale starts. So what our technology does allows you to scan that QR code. And when you scan it, you can actually set a reminder for when that sale uh, is about to start. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you receive that direct mail piece just a few days before the sale. And then you'll once you scan and set a reminder, you're able to get an alert right to your mobile phone that says, hey, this sale has started. Uh, go ahead and start shopping right now and receive your 25% off with this coupon. Click here to get started. And so now you've taken that offline component. You've built in a reminder and alert to excite people about uh, shopping uh, for your products and service and taking advantage of that sales price. And we've converted that from an offline to an online experience by, uh, by utilizing a text message component in order to remind them about that sale. Yeah, no, I'm, I I love that idea because yeah, you know, sometimes you get that piece in the mail or you see that and you think, oh yeah, that looks really cool, and then you put it in a drawer and you forget about you it. Forget about it. <laughs> and then <laughs> later on, you... John, that's exactly why we built it. Was uh, was what do we do with the people? We know not everybody's going to respond. We got that. Yeah. But what do we do about the people that do want to respond but just simply don't have time to respond? What they, mm -hmm. what they do exactly what you say. They put it on a bulletin board. They stick it in their purse, and then they forget about it. Uh, only for that cell to, to to be here and gone, right? Yeah. And so Post Reminder does a really great job of being able to interact with that consumer on multiple touch points, uh, really driving and encourage them to uh, take advantage of that cell. Mm -hmm. And and then just um, in, in terms of like different types of uh, of of pieces of of direct mail, because I think a lot of people just think of okay, it's a brochure or it's a postcard or whatever. But I mean, you mentioned some creative things earlier. What are some of the other things that you can do? Yeah, well, uh, you know, our, we have basic formats that are usually our good starter formats, mm -hmm. and those would be the, your your basic postcard because of the low cost, your self mailer because of the low cost but more real estate, your letter pack because it allows us to have what's called a stealth. Uh, or blind envelope. So it drives people on the inside. They have to get on the inside before they throw it away just to make sure it's nothing important. Right. And then we have what's called a snap pack. And those are kind of our basic packages. But then you can go beyond that with dimensional mail, as I mentioned. Um, you could also do uh, video mailers. These are very cool um, uh, manufacturers making video mailers. So you could actually have an entire video presentation. Um, and we did this with a real estate agent uh, agency one time where you actually open up the mailer and it actually self plays a video of the home that's for sale. And that went to a very select, it was very high end housing and it went to a very select few people. Um, so you're not spending a ton of money. I mean, it is about 30 bucks, 40 bucks a pop, right. but you're looking at selling, a, you know, here in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, you're looking to sell about an eight to $15 million home. So it's worth the cost. And then the impact of that is huge, right? People get a video mail mailer and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm, I'm getting to see, I don't have to go online. And it's just cool, right? So, so that kind of stuff is really, um, really um, impactful, especially for those lower volume, higher sales items that you can afford to spend that kind of money on those impressions. Yeah, and just um, and just one last question: What uh, any any impact do you see from AI? Yeah, well, what people don't know is that AI has been um, been working with the USPS for a very, very long time. And in fact, mail sorting has been around for over a decade, even longer. And um, and that's all being done with AI. It's mm. sorting the the mail with with eyeballs. So it it really started way way back. But um, as we move into the future, we're seeing more AI um, kind of infiltrate how we're uh, targeting. Uh, how it's affecting our data and our modeling. Um, and so the AI is actually helping us with uh, with better parameters in order to make sure that the that the uh, addresses that we are receiving and the audience we are trying to market to is closer to what the product and service is. So um, so AI has been amazing. And then of course, there's AI on the creative side where it's helping us maybe with some copywriting efforts, or maybe it's helping us um, with, um, with automation when it comes to uh, how that response is being handled. So AI is gonna be continuing to uh, affect the direct mail channel. 
uh, for, for the good, uh, being able to allow us to produce higher response and conversion mm-hmm. rates for that male. Yeah, no, I find fan, fantastic. And yeah, I agree. I mean, it's kind of frustrating, though, when you see if you think you're a pretty good writer yourself, and then you run it through AI, and you think, that was better, darn. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to say too much, but uh, I've been very impressed at times, like, wow, that is amazing. And, um, and gosh, when you only think about that this technology, chat GPT alone, yeah. has only been around for maybe a little over a year, and the impact that it's had on us so far. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty amazing about two and a half to five years from now oh. to see what exactly is being utilized with this tech. Yeah, no, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, listen, thanks, Mike. All Mike's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Mike, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Gunderson Direct. Yeah, well, thank you so much, John. So uh, my name is Mike Gunderson, president of Gunderson Direct. You can check out our website anytime. Uh, we have uh, lots of information about direct mail and also some really great blogs. Uh, and that's at GundersonDirect.com. And then if you are interested in that new technology I mentioned, Post Reminder, you can go to PostReminder.com. We are offering that for free for marketers uh, right now. We want as many marketers to get on that platform and try it out. And, you know, just like any direct mail, we want you to test and then roll out. And so we want to make sure that that testing is free. See if you get any benefit out of it. And if you do, then hopefully we can uh, we can have you as a customer. So thanks yeah. again, John. Appreciate everything. No, and thank you, Mike, and thank you for sharing all of this important stuff. You gotta, you know, I think as I think as marketers, sometimes you know, you have to remind yourself that there are reasons why things worked in the past, and not always be chasing shiny toys. I think uh, it's, it's old school, reminder. man, but it still works. It still yeah. works really yeah. well. And so, uh, yeah, I do encourage people to to at least give it a closer look. Uh, if you if you thought about direct mail, and if you're a young marketer and you don't know what direct mail is. <laughs> You know, contact. I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. It is, uh, it's an amazing way to to drive new sales into your organization. If you're a young person who's never received or sent anything through the mail, <laughs> that's right. My kids still, by the way, John. My kids still go to the mailbox every day. They run there. Uh, their aunts and their uncles still write them. I still send them birthday cards. Oh, still do great. a lot of uh, correspondence through the mail, and they they absolutely love getting something physical. So it's still here, at least for that generation uh, to stay. And uh, so we're excited to to be able to service those companies with direct mail. Yeah, excellent. Again, thanks, Mike. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.